Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. We got five big stories for you today, an update to Nintendo Switch Online, our first real deep dive into Sonic Frontiers gameplay. We've got Nintendo returning to an event that they were doing before the pandemic, now coming back, uh, traveling around, showing off some games. Oh, and by the way, Nintendo still isn't exactly perfect. Um, they are still going after certain YouTube channels over certain things, highlighting yet again, uh, not that Nintendo is the mean guy on the street, but that they are still lacking, uh, something very important to all of us gamers, uh, and this, the reason that I still use YouTube for certain things during my live streams. Alright guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and uh, this is Prime News. Uh, before we get into it, i got to remind you, we have a giveaway going on right now for two copies of Super Mario Super Strikers. <clears throat> i got to remind you, we have a giveaway going on right now for two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League. It's actually a kickoff giveaway for our Prime Gaming Fest. Prime Gaming Fest is an event happening June 9th to June 14th. Thousands of dollars of giveaway. We partner with Capcom, Nintendo, Ubisoft, 11-Bit Studio, Flynn's Arcade, um, Skull and Company, Fixture Gaming, uh, Ghoulie Kit, and so many more. We're giving away thousands of dollars worth of stuff, whether it's games, accessories, uh, all that stuff, you know, g cool gaming art. It, the list really doesn't end. Uh, we're giving away all of this stuff from June 9th through June 14th, as well as reacting to all the gaming news, fun gaming events, gaming tournaments, uh, special guests. We have Jake Randall coming on, we got HMK, we got, uh, uh, what, what's his name? What's his name? All right, Special Nick from Xbox Era, and so much more. We we have all gaming competitions. Eric and I are going to be facing off against each other from the Nintendo Prime Podcast, uh, and a, a lot of special events. Uh, we're gonna have events where we're actually competing also against the chat as well for prizes. It's going to be a lot of fun. That being said, let's get right into Prime news. Our first story of the day. Uh, we could start with Pokemon because you know there was a new thing, but we're actually going to be starting with the thing we haven't created content on yet. And that is the Sonic's Frontiers gameplay. Uh, so an IGN first drop today with seven minutes. Now we actually saw a teaser yesterday of about 30 seconds or so, 38 seconds or so, that showed a little bit of this and a little bit of combat. Now today we didn't actually see any combat. We just saw seven minutes of essentially Sonic traversing the world and solving a couple uh, basic puzzles in the world as well. Uh, it's obviously really cool to have the confirmation of puzzle elements that, that, that gives it kind of a Zelda vibe. And we got to see just how the movement worked. Now there is a common criticism uh, from this that it kind of looks like one of those Unreal Engine um, fan games with Sonic running around in. And I can understand that to a point. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if this game is made in Unreal Engine 4 or 5. Uh, but I think that's also being a little bit unfair. We got to remember that the IGN, their IGN first series, does a month-long blowout of whatever game at the time it is. So we're just seeing basics of Sonic right now, and it's going to be expanded as we get deeper and deeper into the month. Uh, one thing we did see from this gameplay is obviously the freedom of movement, uh, the way Sonic can traverse up and down walls, the way he can grind rails, the way there's multiple forms of travel, uh, and just how big this world is. Uh, I honestly thought it actually looked pretty incredible, but we'll get more into personal opinions during the Nintendo Prime podcast tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, but still, yeah, there was, there was a seven-minute trailer. We'll link to it down below if you haven't seen it yet. I know you saw some of it right now, but you're obviously not getting the full breath of the experience uh next up our next story is actually about pokemon scarlet and violet so we did get a new trailer this morning nintendo and the pokemon company warned us about this yesterday uh so what's really cool about it is it was about a three minute trailer three minutes and seven seconds to be exact and they unveiled actually quite a bit of stuff not only did we get the release date of november 11th we got the unveiling of the the legendaries for the game uh we also got the unveiling that hey guess what there's multiplayer in this game, up to four player multiplayer going on. I, I can't seem to confirm whether it's local and online or if it's just local or just online. I don't know, but up to four people can play together. I think that is absolutely incredible. Uh, there's also you know people out there kind of arg arguing that there's like this past and future aesthetic going on, uh, potentially time travel. I, I don't buy the time travel aspect. I do I do buy the aesthetic a bit. But not the, not the, the time travel. But again, we'll talk about this deeper on the podcast tonight. But one fun note that actually came out afterwards is that Toby Fox, who was the composer for Undertale, 
um, has composed multiple tracks for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, including the field music that the Pokemon Company has remixed into multiple forms, and a snippet of his music actually appears in that trailer today. Uh, and but he's actually did some other tracks as well. So it's not like he just created the one track that gets remixed. He actually created multiple tracks in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I think that's just really awesome. Toby Fox is a really, really great composer. Uh, so I'm just really excited to see his work appearing in Pokemon and the Pokemon Company obviously expanding itself to be more inclusive of outside influences. So next up, the Nintendo Switch Road Trip returns. What is the Nintendo Switch Road Trip? I'm glad you asked. Um, so this is only returning in North America at this time. Uh, and essentially, Nintendo has announced that they're going to be doing a Nintendo Switch road trip all across the U.S. Uh, if you're lucky enough to make it to one of these events, which will take place in nine different cities across America between June 10th and the 5th of September, you'll get a chance to go hands-on with the latest Switch titles on a shiny OLED model Switch. And uh, I'll get to the locations in a moment because uh, people want to know what can you play. Only three games have been announced for the tour so far. The two most recently released games in Nintendo Switch Sports and Kirby and the Forgotten Land, alongside the upcoming Mario Strikers Battle League. And it, hey, the first stop is actually the day Mario Strikers Battle League comes out. That's really, really cool. You can pre-register for the event and all that. We'll put a link uh, down below, you know, because some of the venues might require you pay to enter. By the way, last time Nintendo did this, they updated the games throughout the event. So sometimes you got to actually try out games before they came out. Now, this is actually starting on the day Mario Strikers Battle League comes out, so all three of the games present will be games you can already readily purchase and play that same day. But that doesn't necessarily mean by the end of September that you won't be playing something like, say, hey, you know, the the, the last, the last uh, one's what, September 5th. Hey, you could end up playing Splatoon 3 that day, uh, you know, before it actually comes out. So it's just something to keep in the back of your mind that they do generally update the games as the trip goes on. So you're still not going to be playing the same three games at the end of the trip as you did at the beginning. Now, as for the dates, the first date, is June 10th through the 13th. It's going to be at Mall of America in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The next date, and by the way, that one should be absolutely free. I know Mall of, Mall of America doesn't cost any money to enter. I, I've been there many times. The next dates are June 23rd to June 25th in Denver, Colorado at the Park Meadows Mall. June 30th to July 2nd in my home state of Milwaukee, Wisconsin at Henry Mayer Festival Park, aka the Summerfest Grounds. If you've ever been to Summerfest, you'll know where that is. Then July 8th to July 12th is the next segment, and that's happening in Chicago, Illinois at Navy Pier. Next one is July 21st to July 24th at San Diego, California, and that's going to be at the San Diego Comic-Con uh, with an interactive zone. Uh, it's going to be in the interactive zone across from Petco Park. August 5th to August 8th is the next one, and that's going to be happening at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at Musket Fest. You have the next one is from August 12th to August 16th, which is going to be at Rayleigh Durham, North Carolina at the streets of Southport. From August 25th to August 28th, it's going to actually be at Los Angeles, California at the Universal City Walk Hollywood. And the last one is right in Nintendo America's home turf, September 2nd to the 5th in Seattle, Washington, where Nintendo of America is located at Alderwood Mall. So there are your dates. Uh, if you want to go check it out, it's pretty cool. I've been to one of these before. Um, again, they update the games throughout the event, and uh, we'll, we'll see what well, what games you might get to play ahead of time soon enough. So not everything's always rosy in the world of Nintendo. Uh, they've gone after several YouTubers in the past for various reasons. Uh, more, more recently, they've been going after YouTubers that upload a lot of albums of Nintendo music. So let's just get into the news here. This isn't the first time, and it won't be the last time we hear something like this. So Deoxys Prime has revealed that they have received over 500 copyright claims from Nintendo. As a result, they decided to remove all of the Nintendo music from their channel, which is no doubt disappointing to many. Um, but he did put out a statement on Twitter, and here's what he said. Effective immediately, I will be removing all Nintendo music from my channel. With 500 plus claims and more than a dozen soundtracks blocked over the last week, it's pretty, cl pretty clear they don't want their music on YouTube. I have no intention of deleting my channel, so he's not going to go as far as other YouTubers have gone. Uh, but... All of my non-Nintendo soundtracks will remain up for the foreseeable future. It's frustrating, but as I've said before, it's ultimately their choice to have their music blocked on the platform. Best of luck to anyone still holding out on having Nintendo music on YouTube. So many of those soundtracks have never gotten official releases, but like how bigger channels than mine have gotten hit before eventually those who take their place will end up like this too. So the music's gonna keep popping up, but Nintendo is gonna probably keep shutting it down. Now this is rather unfortunate, but you know, 
Nintendo controller the control. I just want I just want them to put them on Spotify or something, right? Like they do release official albums for most of their games. They just happen to only be in Japan and they're only available for a very short period of time. Not widely available worldwide. I know rips of them appear online. It's easy enough to find them illegally. Uh, but I mean Nintendo themselves should have their own music channel. We've seen the Pokemon company dabbling in this. Uh, so when the Pokemon company's doing it, why not Nintendo? Obviously making their albums available on Spotify and other places where people could pay to access it or watch ads to watch their stuff. I don't know. Nintendo has been really weird about their music. Their music is some of the most legendary music in the world. I can use it freely in my videos as a backtrack without getting claimed. Uh, hey, Nintendo, where do you think I'm getting that music from? Other YouTube channels. So, uh, But I'm allowed to do that, but they're not allowed to just have them up just to listen to. But I can use them as backtracks legally. It's so strange. But you know what? It is what it is. Uh, sucks. But, you know, another one bites the dust when it comes to popular places to find Nintendo music. And our last story is is a bit of an interesting one. Uh, Nintendo on Monday patched uh, Kirby 64 Nintendo Switch Online, right? They released an update to Nintendo Switch Online, the, the N64 app, and they patched the bug in in the Kirby 64 game that was making people basically get the hitbox glitch uh, in underwater sections in the game. So you'd get hit by an enemy, and you'd be stuck in a hitbox animation, and you couldn't move, you couldn't do anything, you couldn't progress. You basically had to reset the game, uh, losing your progress. So that was obviously a very, very frustrating bug. And we talked in the past how there really isn't an excuse for a game-breaking bug like that to exist. It's one thing if you have to do a special thing to trigger it this is you literally just get hit by an enemy underwater uh that was not something that was difficult to trigger and should have been caught in qa testing it's very clear it probably didn't even go through qa testing uh, it kind of felt like they saw if the game would run on the emulator they played it for a little bit and they said good to go without properly testing all aspects of the game because this bug has only existed on this version of the game it's not existed in any prior versions of the game including the original release uh but they did release a patch to fix it so that is always kudos to nintendo for uh taking advantage of the fact that they can update their services and update their games and patch things out um in fact actually it's, what's kind of neat is they even release um prints of games from the past that include the patches i believe i uh, i saw somewhere that new copies of breath of the wild physical cartridges come with all of the latest patches you don't have to download anything i, I thought that was kind of cool um so th it is kind of neat that nintendo's doing that with physical i i thought that was kind of neat that they're updating the physical but this is one of those situations where man do do we give nintendo credit for fixing it or do we get nintendo credit for i guess recognize i don't know like it's it's a positive that nintendo fixed it it also shouldn't have been a problem in the first place when i see nintendo switch online updates i don't want to see it patching issues that should have never made it in, in the first place i want to see it improving the service oh like hey look now you can navigate between games just a little bit quicker we we we, we, we did better with the snappiness and and, and that kind of stuff like, i want to see you know actual improvements to the service rather than just fixing mistakes you've already made but hey you know what they fixed it that's something at least uh and it's, i guess it's a better story to end on than uh nintendo just copyright striking and nuking channels so um yeah there, there's your there's your a little bit less negative story to end the day but hey we did have pokemon today which looked incredible um and obviously you you, you can't forget that sonic stuff baby yeah, what, what a cool day i'll be sure to tune into our podcast tonight uh on the nintendo prime podcast channel actually sorry it will be on the podcast channel tomorrow Tune in tonight to watch it live on the Nintendo Prime channel here at 8 p.m. Central. We already have it up. In fact, you know what? I'll put a link down in the description um, for you guys to just like head on over and set your notifications for it. We already have that stream ready to go for you guys. Should be uh, should be a really in depth podcast because uh, it might be our final podcast before Prime Gaming Fest. Uh, so you know there is that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. <laughs>